Christopher Media. Let's make some noise. Young thing, and then lady of my life. From Asmacore Studios near Detroit, Michigan. Oh, man. It's the Weedsman Podcast. I have no idea what's going on. And now, you have smoked yourself retarded. Here are the Weedsmen. You want to get hot? Now, to me, that was side one. Because that was the side of the picture die. disc that had the album name on it. He was in the white suit at Michael Jackson Thriller. Now, I now realize if he had the album, it was he had a fucking tiger chilling with him, too, when it folded out. Yeah. But... That was, I guess, that was side two. So I guess side one was want to be starting something, uh, baby be mine, uh, 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 the girl is mine, and then Thriller. That was side one, right? I don't, I don't know that I've ever owned the album. What? Yeah, it seemed like ev- everybody owned it. That was the first, the first full length that I guess my parents owned it. But that it was given to me for my fifth birthday was the Thriller fucking picture disc. Well, give us an intro, and uh, and we'll try and pick this up. Yes. Welcome to the Weedsman Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Aaron. Welcome back. Yeah. We were just uh, kind of mid-conversation here uh, to clue the listeners in talking about vinyl and one of the top-selling records. Um, I, what? Is it still? Is, is something beat it yet? I I would have to say like something had to have beat it because you know record sales well album sales mm-hmm. I'd say that's a curious one I bet you it retains a record as far as LPs are concerned because that was still that was on the cusp of what was this um, oh we didn't say what album we're talking about did we well I, I think I Michael said Jackson's it, thriller. thriller yeah yeah and at, what. Well, was this 84? 82? Did, didn't Thriller come out? Yeah, 82. But yeah, I mean, it had to have but been it 82. it had a lifespan of like three fucking years. <clears throat> yeah, because if it came out in 84, it would probably sell a lot more cassettes. But 82, 82 is still the 70s. The e- oh, my God. The- right. Eagles' greatest hits has sold more copies than Thriller, but Thriller is still considered the best-selling album of all time. As of July 2024, Thriller is estimated to have sold over 70 million copies worldwide. Are they saying so? Like, then, if you the best-selling album and greatest hits is not an album; it's a compilation. Yeah, but the Eagles' greatest hits. Ew, that makes sense. I mean, that's dollar bin fodder. That's the thing. You know what? That's Eagles. You would find in the dollar bin, and Thriller never did. Fuck no. Everybody who bought that album kept that album. No, yeah, goddamn right. They no, did. nobody fucking sold. Thriller. It is still at my parents' house. Yeah, the vinyl. Yeah, I yeah. said that picture disc is still. I go get it right yeah, now. The, the my mom would be like, the, "Why are you here?" Lion it's late. Cub it's or the uh, tiger yeah. cub. It's tiger cub. No, I didn't have the tiger cub. I just had the picture disc. They said when right once so, I <clears> saw the full <throat> album. Yeah, <clears throat> the, like, hey, I didn't get a tiger cub. What the fuck? The picture disc was cool, and that was him in the white suit. Yeah, laid out, mm-hmm. kind then, of propped up, and then the back was him in the leather jacket. You know, I was so I said earlier that eighty two was still the seventies, right? And I feel like by eighty three, that's when we started getting into like neon is cool and the, you know, I don't. Know, the I think synthesizer like, was having its day. Yeah, definitely, and uh, you know, triangle patterns and just ran, like bright colors and spandex. Span yeah, spandex. Freddie Mercury said, "Oh, yeah. finally." What was uh, shit? What was that uh, cartoon like outline drawing of the guy with the spiky hair? Uh... <laughs> I try. To, is he like a mascot or something? I think he maybe shilled for something, but he was like an artist creation. Fido Dido. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did Seven Up adverts. He's a radical little dude. He was, oh, 85. So anyway, but like maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe Thriller is part of that pushing us into the 80s fully. You know, because it's still, he's, it's the album where he's shaking off that disco thing, which I'm not knocking, like off the wall, that album is fucking great. The title, they play the shit out of Rock With You and the other one. Off the wall is a good song. Yeah. 
But that was his disco album. Well, that's a good album. And, uh, and Thriller was like leaning more rock, even though it did have like, it, it also was like big into the synthesizers and drum machine sound. Yeah, but Quincy Jones was involved, so it was more R&B oriented. Yeah. yeah. And Thriller, and I don't mean this in a pejorative way, because when we all watch it now, we can realize this, the gayest gang battle you'll ever see. Oh, hands down. Like, it is choreographed. They're crossing swords. That's just like, uh, that's gotta be a tribute to, like, the Warriors, right? Because Warriors came out before that. Or West Side Story. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah, we've always had an infatuation with, uh, or romanticizing of gangs. Yeah. And then Billy Jean with the light up sidewalk. Yeah. And I mean, it gets, uh, it gets worse the further away you get from, like, I watched that, uh, um, the bike riders. I don't know. I, maybe we didn't talk about it on the show. We were on our hiatus. You know, the bike riders. It was, uh, no. So the, the kid who played, uh, Elvis in that recent biopic, really pretty looking dude. I forget his name. He is, he's the star of, uh, him and, uh, Oh, I, the guy who started ta- Austin something, right? Uh, uh, Is his yeah, name? I want to say Austin Powers. <laughs> it probably is. Jodie Comer is in it, who uh, she was in uh, Killing Eve. Tom Hardy. Austin Butler. That's what it is. Yeah. And Norman Reedus, just because, like, you know, they're making a movie about people riding motorcycles, so he's got to be in it. But, uh, that is nothing but a romanticized, a ro- can't ever say that word, romanticization of a gang. These, I mean, these guys were like kind of horrific, some of the shit that they did. But, you know, they're, they're driving around these cool old, like, I don't even know what they are, like Harleys and Indian motorcycles. Indian? Yeah, that- Indian motorcycles. Oh, that's a brand? Those, yeah. Oh, you're not familiar? That was big. I think pre Harley. Indian was like, as far as the the people, because this is post World War II, right? And a lot of these guys are survivors of that of that conflict, and they're kind of aimless. Gotcha. They come back from the service, they don't know what to do. The society doesn't want them. Yeah, that's that's how biker gangs started. Was, oh yeah, an Indian. I believe Indian Motorcycles was like the the brand, and then Harley Davidson. So I think Indian Motorcycles were already around, and Harley was more like chasing the market. What the fuck happened? I don't know. Harley Branding. hired a better PR firm. I think something happened early on. Maybe they got. Maybe it was just like a buyout, um, because I think all of the vintage Indian stuff. I don't. I don't follow it, but it seems like you don't see anything after like the fifties. I'm looking at Indian motorcycles. I bet you somebody has to have like bought the brand at least. And yeah, there's a, a website for Indian motorcycle. Surprised they can call it that still. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's still looking more. They were always like a smaller body than a, than a Harley. Maybe that was, that's why like Harley had the like big body and the sound. I don't know. I'm resigned to like I'm never going to be a bike rider. Polaris bought Indian. Is they're the current owner of Indian motorcycles? Polaris, like, don't they do like skidoos and shit like that? Snowmobiles, skidoos, yeah. pool equipment. I'm not joking. We had uh, tornado warnings for part of Michigan. I don't know if that covered you. Oh, we did. Yeah, I think it was early. I was sitting in a office all day. Yeah. I think a little nice break in the weather here. Some cool days. Yeah, it doesn't and, suck to uh, sit up in my room. It's nice. And oddly, in Michigan, I don't know if this is elsewhere, but uh, the Spirit Halloweens have opened. Oh, yeah. Started opening up. Mm-hmm. Is this, a, is this the usual thing to happen in, like, l- late summer? I've noticed you start seeing them now in August, the last few years. With uh, the rise of cosplay... And all kinds of other kinky shit. And also that influence of cosplay influencing people, you know, they, I think that given the freedom to dress a little more campy or 
accessorize uh, in in different ways. I'm surprised that Spirit Halloween just isn't isn't able to go 24 seven. Not 20. You know what I mean? 365. That's right. A, that's the day's thing. Maybe big sex shops keeping them down. Like, listen, you can set up your little stores for eight weeks a year, but someone wants a fucking lace corset at Christmas time. They're coming to us. Yeah, imagine you can get because like the uh, Halloween costumes, they just keep the. Not only they keep coming earlier, they keep, they they keep getting sluttier. Probably another influence from cosplay. They're always making <laughs> slutty versions of. God bless them. Yeah. Like either, like, uh, what do you call it? Just swapping the gender. Somebody like making a sexy, I don't know. Well, like the, the Lady Deadpool in the recent movie. Sexy Deadpool? Yeah. But sometimes it's like, you know, they're taking, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of what's the, there's a little girl in the Pokemon that I, it's always running around in a crop top and, Little shorts and suspenders. And she's short, so I I don't know if they ever say her age, but she's definitely like like not even pubescent. And like sexy versions of that is just kind of bizarre. Yeah, that's when you're crossing into like, uh, are we is this Halloween? Yeah. Is any of this Halloween or is it all just like yeah. fetish day? It's just it's the uh it's the purge for fetishes. <laughs> right. So or, one day they can go out or not undetected. Fe- no, I mean it's it's f- p- people who actually have fetishes and express them in healthy ways. Uh, they would call this amateur day. You know, this is like like alcoholics do for you know St. Right. Patrick's Day. I was going to say Irish, but yes, same thing. <laughs> <laughs> pissed off all our Irish listeners. But they're drunk, so they oh, don't care. that's <laughs> right. A, they were already pissed off. B, they're drunk enough to forget it in five minutes. <laughs> oh, and C, I'm amongst you. Not drunk. Just high. So breaking news today, huh? Uh, Kamala has picked her running mate. An old white guy. An old white guy. Yep. I don't understand that move. Because I think there's... She's already got the diversity box checked? I just... Yeah. I, that's exactly it. She's got all the diversity boxes checked. So we get... Well, uh, no, like, it should have been gay white guy, right? If you're going to go white guy, you got to go oh, gay. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag dumb so straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, Kamala. If you're going to go old white guy, it's got to be gay. You're missing a box. How many... Uh, you you don't have any old white gay, gay guys left in, in politics that I know of. There's uh, uh, what was his name with the like kind of, kind of a speech impediment? Oh, Barney Frank. Yeah, he died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. That's what I was saying. Like with him out, like I don't know who's, who you have There's left. There's got to be an, an elder gay congressman. <laughs> Another possible veep that's uh, touting diet Mountain Dew, though. Again, yeah. Or is he poking what fun? Advance. No, uh, he's. <clears throat> Another Tim Waltz fact, his apparent sort of choice is Diet Mountain Dew. Waltz has shared his love for Diet Mountain Dew on many occasions and say things like, had to do it, D-E-W. <laughs> wow. What? If you drink any diet soda, at least drink Diet Dr. Pepper. It actually tastes like Diet Do- or Di- Dr. Pepper. That's probably the closest, yeah. They just, they're, it's probably just, you know, the caffeine. And just drink coffee. Like, that's what I do now. If I want caffeine, I get it from a bean. There you go. You know it's good because it rhymes. A dark French roasted bean. How about some uh, <clears throat> some tadpole water? Uh, I have a little bit of that in the morning. What? I <clears throat> If you're trying to slim down. I work with tadpole water in like <laughs> April and May. Let's see. Uh, you need some warm water. A couple tablespoons of chia seeds, some fresh lemon. Oh, it's the name of the drink. Yeah, you call it, you call it tadpole water. Say so it's the texture is funky and it tastes funky too. <laughs> <laughs> it does look gross. It's just chia seeds and fucking water. Yeah, it's, there's nothing Ew. to it, and they probably 
expand a little bit in the water in your stomach. No, they tell you to put chia seeds and stuff because, uh, yeah, it does exactly that. They make you feel full. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. But this stupid story in the New York Post has all these photos. And some of it is like pictures of women actually drinking. You know, they post it on social media drinking this mm-hmm. from their Hello Kitty glasses. And then others are just stock photos of like a woman measuring her waist. <laughs> and then there's tadpoles in the bottom of like a beaker of like water. Like, yeah, we know what tadpoles look like. Yeah, hey, I put this article together. <laughs> oh, Tim Waltz, he's also, here's something that you guys share. I know that you don't uh, agree on soft drinks, but he's a lover of maps. He's a map nerd. He's a geography teacher, or a former geography teacher. It says here, Man- Mankato geography teacher. Where's Mankato. Uh, Doesn't it sound like it's in Hawaii or something? Hey Siri, where's Mankato? There you go, because she knows she likes maps. It's in Minnesota. Mankato, Minnesota. Yeah, that makes more sense. It sounds Native American. Something OJ said. Man, Cato, can you hold this knife? (laughs) Man, Cato, can you just stop talking for a minute? (laughs) Yeah. I'm going to get us out of this. Just be cool. Man, Cato, be cool. We had a thing. I would call him Mankato. He would call me Mandingo. <laughs> yeah, most of this article is talking about GIS software. Oh, because he, he identifies as a GIS nerd. Geographical Information Systems. Oh, yeah. I like playing with those maps. Played with what them is at it? my old job. Is it, uh, was it like just Google Maps? No, it, 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 like on crack, like you can drill down on somewhere and it get, just gives you all the stats. You can get down to like the average household, the average size per household, what everybody makes. Oh, really? It gives you, gives you, uh, some raw data. It's there, like a huh? map in a census survey fucked. Wow. I bet you that's what Santa Claus uses. <laughs> It, it would could possibly to spy on everyone. He's also a Springsteen fan. Ugh, of Mr. course Tim he Walsh. is. I've come around on Springsteen. Mm-hmm. I have a Springsteen playlist that I, I put on from time to time. I've come. To He's got some good either shit like out him there. Or you don't. Yeah. What is it that rubs you so wrong with him though? Because like, it's boring. He's boring. Oh it's man, some of. The, I don't know. Like they're good pop songs, good rock songs. I think he's a, re- I think he's a really good songwriter. But you're right; it is really hard to defend. Right? No, it's cool. It's right. All the songs that your daddy doesn't like me. They're closing down the factory. Ah, uh, like that. That's like a period, and there was a period before and a period after. Like he, that's one thing. Like I don't like all the periods of. Like, Human Touch, you can keep that shit, but... Born in the USA, he finally went, all right, fuck it, let's get some radio airplay. Yeah. Like... I mean, that song is... It is what it is. No, I meant that album. That album has some good songs on it, though. I don't know, and I think that he definitely got pigeonholed. He got stereotyped with that, like you know, working man's type of thing, like get on my bike and ride us on out of this dirty old town type of shit. Yeah. But I, most of, well, there's definitely like, I think post born to run, you've got way more introspective, like he's going and that's less so of the stuff that I like, but he's also, you know, he's doing age appropriate things. He's, you know, getting into his middle ages and, uh, and talking about, you know, things like regret and whatnot. But I, he's also just really good at just writing dumb, great songs. You know, fun rock pop songs. I don't think he takes himself generally that seriously. I mean, he's definitely had his kind of blowhard phase too. He went through his Bono phase. Oh, he's still in it. Is he? Well, he was doing his podcast with Obama. What does that mean? What do they even talk? Do they even do a podcast really still? Like, cause I've never, no, they, they I listen to a lot of podcasts they and like, God faded quickly. <clears throat> everyone talks about those two doing a podcast together. And I'm like, where? 
what what was it? What did they talk about? I don't remember this thing. Did it really exist? It did. Was it like behind a paywall? No. But Tim Waltz, I'm sure he, he's probably just saying that he likes Springsteen because that's like a safe bet, right? I mean, um, I asked him, what's your favorite band? And he's like, oh, uh, uh, people ten to fifteen years older than he's me. Thinking, oh, Abba. Oh no, Bruce that's too gay. Uh, oh, uh, who loves Bruce Springsteen? Like people ten to fifteen years older than me love Bruce Springsteen. Like that is his like that is his demographic. Yeah, there's a bottomless beer and taco festival what? happened in California recently. Yeah, I know. It's still going on. To, yeah, can, it's supposed we, to be bottomless. Can we make it? <laughs> no, actually, it was uh, within twenty minutes. It was devoid of tacos. Well, yeah, you tell motherfuckers all you can eat tacos, people yeah. are going to show up. It was 50 bucks, and it ended up like, well, this story says it, <laughs> it delved into chaos. They burned the burn festival down? Yeah, yeah this, this sounds like so, something that would happen on the, in, in uh, Springfield, <laughs> right? The town is always rioting. What does the, the mayor say about the town always rioting? Uh, there are no free... So the people pay 50 bucks to get into this place. There are no free tacos... Uh, or even tasting tacos, so you're like, you immediately had to like spend more money just to get the tacos. Fifty dollars is just to get you in. There were four food trucks, and they were all out of food within twenty minutes. Damn! Talk about not planning. Well, it sounds like they plan to have plenty of beer, so that's like a bad combination. Yeah, right? Everyone's liquored up and hungry. Yeah, no, they have nothing to absorb the alcohol. Promise free food. They're mad that they don't yeah. have food. <laughs> Yeah, now they're out of food. With these four food trucks also rolled over. It's probably 110 degrees out. Yeah. Now the customer said they spent a whopping 188 dollars on two VIP tickets, and revealed that. Uh, let's see. Well, it says revealed that even the taco vendors were confused. So I'm guessing they're confused as to like what the VIP part of it was. I don't know, man. You, that's on you. You got VIP tickets to a, a, a taco and beer <laughs> right. fest. Not sure what you expected. But also, that's one that I'd have to have clearly laid out. But really, you're going to have a festival where you're going to have all you can... You're going to have bottomless tacos and beer and you have four food trucks, maybe 40. Or like have a couple Mexican restaurants in the area on retainer. They also had one person checking tickets at the door and there were at times... Estimated over a thousand people in line Jesus. to get into this place. They underestimated the power of this festival. But imagine that you waited. In, how long did you wait in line to get into a place and find out they're out of tacos? I'd be pissed. So how many people died? <laughs> Nobody died. Any, uh, anyone? Any injuries? No, it's kind of a miracle that there was no violence. The free beer kept everybody cool. Listen, all right, fine. I can deal with no tacos. We still getting the free beer. You see Trump's cyber truck. I heard he got a cyber truck and a Rolex. A Rolex. See, oh, this story doesn't. This is the best cyber truck ever. It's not a great shot of it, but it's got the picture of him with the fist pump after he got oh. winged in the ear, and the American flag flying behind him. Um, is that the new presidential yeah. limo if he wins? I think that's just, yeah. I don't know what he's going to do with it, but there was a, he was given this by a 23 year old internet celebrity. Mr. Beast? No. Aiden Ross, known for stirring controversy. That's it. They don't tell us anything else about him. <laughs> he's just, he's on YouTube and he's known for stirring controversy. So that, Really narrows it so down. So is he a real life troll? Is that what they're getting at? Yeah, I would have thought. I heard that he got a cyber truck. I would have thought that Elon gave it to him because they're all buddy buddy now, right? Maybe he's giving him another one. It's like, look, is now he this matching set? This one's for Melania. Is he keeping true to his pledge to give what was it like a million dollars every month or something like that? Wow. Or every week or every day? Who knows? Yeah, it was after after the assassination attempt. Elon said that he was going to donate like millions of dollars to make sure that Trump gets elected. Which that's like, what does that 
prove to you, like you so proves he can write it off because he made a donation. That's what it proves. You can't write off political donations. I heard uh, that Elon's going to be interviewing Trump. That's got that. Must be an insane conversation to listen to. That's going to be must-watch media. Well, th- both of them are actually good interviews, right? They're mm-hmm. good. In- they're good interviewees, and they both don't know when to shut up. I just, yeah, and I like. I just listened to an interview with Elon Musk the other day. Actually, he was on uh, on uh, what's that kid's show that he's friends with? I'm forgetting his name. But yeah, ni- like neither of them are good interviewers. So I like, I don't know. I imagine that Donald Trump's just going to, you know, drive the conversation on that one. That's <laughs> what he does. You just got to give him an opportunity and he'll fucking take it. Yeah. There was, what was it? I think somebody asked him about the border. And he's like, you know, the border's very bad. We got a lot of people coming in. Let me tell you, you know, the these false accusations against me, they take me to court. Like immediately, just not even a segue, just here's what I want to talk about. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, he's like, all I got to do is just bring, hey, Donald, I had tacos for lunch. Bam, you're talking about the border in like three seconds. Yeah. Oh, tacos! You like Mexican food, huh? Yeah. Let me tell you. Oh, you no, know, who else is Mexican? We all love we all love tacos. They bring over the tacos. It's great, but they're not bringing their best people. Bring the ones that make the tacos. Leave the bad ones behind. Your David Lynch has emphysema. I mean, yeah. the gentleman who brought us Go the finger. smoking guy yeah. has emphysema. <laughs> Hold on, I have to sit down. Wait, I'm already sitting down. <laughs> Yeah, he said that uh, he has it for many years of smoking. I have to say that I enjoyed smoking very much. I love this. I do love tobacco, the smell of it, lighting cigarettes on fire, smoking them. But there's a price to pay for this enjoyment. Yeah, you're going to slowly suffocate over the next few years. Isn't that great? Yeah, oh, God. It sucks. Can somebody donate? Like, my lungs are shit. I can't donate. That wouldn't do him any good, but can you donate lungs? He does say that he's going to continue directing remotely. Can we 3D print them? We're not too far away from that. What uh, I think it was uh, it was Ray Kurzweil, you know, the the futurist, who said that we're very fast approaching, like within five years. If you're still still alive in five years, he predicts that you will have the possibility of living to 500 years old what yeah barring you know obviously some sort of accident or something some like medical technology will start advancing fast enough and it'll keep up with your illnesses and keep you going and do you want to live 500 years think maybe around 250 you'd be like man yeah and I've seen a lot of shit. It's been like 250 years. <laughs> well, yeah, but 250 would be cool. Like, just having the option, though. And plus, uh, you know, we think of it as like living to that age, like we would progress like we do now, but it, w- it wouldn't be the case. You know, we naturally, by the time we're into our 90s, you know, and you're pretty, you're essentially decaying. You're decaying while you're still alive, right? <laughs> your your quality of life usually is already dropping enough that like dying doesn't seem as bad, you know. <laughs> and that's that's part of what uh, I, I think a kindness that nature gives us. But if you change completely, change that quality of life as well. I don't know. No, it'd be interesting. I mean, with a lot of this stuff is like, it's going to be pushed forward by AI tremendously. Did you hear about the the pole vaulter that got disqualified because his dick hit the bar? I did. I also heard he's been offered to do porn. (laughs) And that's not a joke. Is that, that bulge looks pretty legit. Like he's not wearing a cup. He's been offered to do porn, huh? Any word on if, is he going to accept? Uh, not yet, but he has been offered. 
Anthony Amirati. You mean Anthony Hammerati? <laughs> yeah, they literally had to go back to the tape on that one, huh? I mean, come on. If he's single, what better press are you ever going to fucking get for your wang? My wang was so big, it disqualified me from a fucking medal. <laughs> yeah. And a good portion of the world saw it happen. They had to go to the tape to determine that my penis ruined my medal. And they were right. Would you like me to disqualify your pussy tonight? Yeah, does he pull, <laughs> pull vault into bed? <laughs> With his penis. Yeah. That's the impressive part. I just need you to starfish. <laughs> <laughs> The skibbity toilet film and fran TV franchise in the works. What? You don't. You don't know what skibbity toilet is? No. Ah, <laughs> uh, dare I ask? It's just I. It's just an animated head in a toilet. I think. What? Are we out of ideas? Isn't this just Max Headroom redone in a toilet? Uh, February seventh, two thousand twenty-three. Alexei Derasimov uploaded an 11-second video to his YouTube channel, Da Fuck Boom, that's the name of his channel, called Skibbity Toilet, which featured a head emerging from a toilet singing. Little did he know it, but the then 23-year-old from the former Soviet Republic of Georgia had launched a, gen a genuine cultural phenomenon. Is it? I'm just hearing about it now. Is it a cultural phenomenon? Well, you'll hear about it more when Michael Bay's movie comes out. What? Yeah, Michael Bay is going to be directing it. Okay. How's he going to blow shit up in that? Let's see, uh, Skibbity gradually evolved into more than 70 mini epics depicting the infinitely escalating war between the toilets and the cyborgs. That's a twist. <laughs> I didn't see cyborgs coming. Wow. So you can see there's a lot to play with there. Well, I mean, you can hear how Bay's going to blow shit yeah. up, right? There's obviously a war. Each video is explosive, violent, and free of any discernible dialogue. Well, it's already Michael Bay. <laughs> like, the, And the picture just keeps getting clearer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Its qualities have won a worldwide audience, not to mention the distinction of being a cultural icon Generation Alpha can truly call its own. Oh God, we're already yeah. They're in middle school. Look, we can, we can we slow the train down. We had fucking GI Joe dubs. <laughs> you know, I'm a computer. <laughs> hey kid, I'm a computer. <laughs> right? Look, I I showed that that shit to my kids. They're like, I don't get it. And I'm like, you're not you're not supposed to. It's not <laughs> something to get. It's just funny, right? Well, what the fuck is Skibbity Toilet? I guess, but they didn't make a movie out of the G.I. Joe shit. They did not. I mean, they kind of did. They made a G.I. Joe live action that was full of nonsense. I mean, I guess we had Beavis and Butthead. I remember being 14, yeah. laughing my ass off, and people like twice my age looking at me going like, this is, oh, this is funny to please. you. Gen X started this nonsense comedy, all right? What about... Especially like MTV, you know, they, the original errors of uh, Beavis and Butthead, but they also had uh, Syphil and Ollie. You remember Syphil and Ollie, the yeah, sock puppets? Yeah, I wasn't a fan of Syphil and uh, Ollie. They were funny. And Chester, the little dweeb that they would talk to, find out what's up with Chester. That human giant, they which had 18-year-old Aziz Ansari, what was and human, Rob Hubel. What was Human Giant? It was just a sketch comedy show. Oh, okay. Wonder Showsen? That was all right. I love me some Wonder Showsen. It was like a bizarre, fucked up Sesame Street. All for bizarre, we've talked about this. My money is on TV Funhouse, man. Yes, TV Funhouse is, yeah. They're those all, are one, in One season, all ten of them are fucking like classics yeah. in their own right. Well, it's, it's Robert Schmeigel. I mean, the guy's yes. a genius. I mean, the Christmas episode. Yeah. And they're tapping the one <laughs> puppet spine and doing, was it Christmas <laughs> cheer? Yeah, you got to get the Christmas <laughs> cheer. 
<laughs> You're snorting it. <laughs> and he, he, he ends up paralyzed at the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then they have to find which one of the chickens, 87 progeny, are, has a chemistry set. So they can cook it down. Yes. Uh, Yeah. They have to take the spinal fluid and reduce it. (laughs) And they're looking at it. They see see like a Metallica poster. You're like, no, that's the metal head. (laughs) (laughs) They see a wrestling poster, a car poster, like a girl in a bikini, and like an Einstein poster. And they're like, yep, this is the one. This one, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There was the one where they went to Vegas. Yeah, Yeah, with... With, uh, with triumph. triumph. Don't touch Goulet! <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens when you give Bob Smigel a TV show and go, hey, there are no rules. Yeah. They pull the plug after one season and go, okay, yeah, there, there, has, to be, there has to be rules. Turns out there were rules. <laughs> yeah. There were rules we didn't even know about <laughs> yeah, until, until you, you put this shit on the air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like uh, the Trump presidency, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're just testing the boundaries. It's kind of fucked up. If you're a felon, can't work at McDonald's, but hey, you can be president. <laughs> hey, you'll have trouble renting property unless you want to live at the White House. Oh, shit. How many members of Congress would we lose if they <laughs> enacted that rule in Washington? Yeah. They're producing a Stranger Things show on Broadway. Because why not? How does that translate? Because I don't know if you noticed, the last 20 years, Broadway's gotten lazy. Yeah. They just turn, it's all jukebox musicals, or they just turn movies into musicals, or TV shows into musicals. Yep. It's all that fucking Spider-Man turn off the dark, uh, it's the fault of that thing. They realize, oh wait, like... We can make something horrible, and people will still come see it just for the spectacle. Well, no. What was that movie? The one that Baldwin was in? All the fucking eighty songs. Uh, Alec Baldwin? Yeah. Uh, but a bunch of people were in it. Oh. Uh, Rock of Ages or something like that. Rock of Ages? Yeah. It was a big Broadway show in the 2000s, and they turned it into a movie. Oh, was I don't... Cruise in it, too? Oh... That that one? There's a bunch of 80 songs I hated. I had forgotten and about all that. In a musical. Where Tom well, Cruise plays the lead singer of a band. Yeah, Rock of Ages. I'm pretty sure I saw that in the theater. I remember almost nothing of that movie. That was a rather fallow uh, Tom Cruise period, though. He wasn't doing his best work then. Mm-hmm. Everyone thought he was gay. And Adam Carolla brought it up like... All that shit went away when he jumped off a cliff on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone thought Cruz was gay. They jumped off a cliff with the motorcycle. That shit just evaporated. I, I think he's wrong on that. <laughs> I think it's actually the culture just not giving a shit anymore and just like, look, he's gay. It's whatever. Nobody really cares. Because he's Michigan Impossible, Michigan Mission Impossible, (laughs) Michigan Impossible. Impossible. These Mission Impossible movies are awesome. (laughs) They are pretty awesome. They're ups and downs. The last one was okay. Uh, What was the last one called? Is that the Ghost Protocol? No, Ghost Protocol was like fucking like fifteen years ago. Yeah, that was Ghost Protocol was one of the really good ones. That's what I was thinking of, but then I was like, "What? That should have been like the name of the last movie because the fucking the villain was AI, and not even an AI with a personality, just an AI that they referenced." Basketball player Allen Iverson. Yeah, <laughs> I think Ohio starts legal weed tomorrow. Ohio does start legal weed tomorrow. It's a bummer for all you Michigan border towns. Oh yeah. I bet you there's like dispensaries in Flat Rock that we're cleaning up. Yeah. Sales in Monroe are going to be down. I'll tell you what, my one buddy is building dispensaries in New Buffalo. Like, he's been building them for the last two years. New Buffalo? It's on the border between uh, Michigan and Indiana. Really? I believe the locals have taken to calling it New Buffalo. (laughs) Huh. I'd never heard of New Buffalo. It's like right here. You're pointing down like... <laughs> I'm pointing at like the... Uh, 
the southwest corner of your the, palm. Yeah, the bottom left of my right palm. Well, I mean, there's not a whole lot of overlap between. Excuse me. Between Michigan and Indiana, it's not a huge stretch. It could be on. Nah. Yeah, I thought I had stuff on Ohio. Now oh, today marks the opening. Oh. Well, welcome, Ohio. 98 mar- marijuana dispensaries received licenses. Madison- Madisonville resident made the first recreational marijuana purchase at the- a Greater Cincinnati dispensary Tuesday morning. So Jeff, got- I'm the first one! Jeff Reed was first in line at Sunnyside Dispensary. The 55-year-old said he'd been waiting in his car in the parking lot since about 6.30 p.m. Monday. For the dispensary to open at 7 a.m. He planned to buy edibles and some flour. Yeah, I slept in my car, Reed told reporters. This is pretty epic to me. I wanted to be the first one here. All right. This is my car. It's pretty standard for me. I mean, are you that excited about it? I just parked it in a different place today. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, what they don't mention is that he went back to sleep in his car that (laughs) night. Yeah. And And still, to this day, is sleeping in the car. Bloom Medicinals open its door to a line of 20 people. Yeah, it can't be that many people who are, would be like lining up for it, right? And 20 people doesn't sound like that's a big deal. Yeah. I don't know. This isn't the same one that the our 55-year-old Jeff uh, made it outside of. But I would, if I waited all night in my car and only 20 people were in line, I'd feel like I wasted my time. <laughs> <laughs> right? Gentleman doesn't understand uh, opportunity cost. Yeah. Or he just doesn't value his time. Or, like I said, his car is his full time fucking residence. I was going to be sleeping in it anyways. I just did it outside the suspensory to be the first in line. As customers left the store, handfuls of them raised their fists in celebration. Listening cheers from the other customers. Yeah, I'm going to get high at nine in really? the morning. People were cheering. In the brightly lit storeroom, customers could use touch screen tablets or chat with employees to browse marijuana products like Black Sheep's eight inch bagel marijuana flowers and Camino's freshly squeezed oranges edibles. All right, so. All right. <laughs> this reporter is just like, what? He's just like writing down, like, okay, what are two things I'm that I this see? this down. What's the, what's the name on that package? Okay, and what are those edibles? All right, I'm done. It's Tuesday morning. It's 8 a.m. Yeah. And these people have time to wait in line to buy weed. This may not be society's winners. Just saying. Because I'm willing to bet today at 8 a.m., you and I were at the same spot. Work. Uh, yeah. I'm be <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to be high as fuck because <laughs> I bought my shit in advance. I mean, yeah, would you ever have time to wait in line at a dispensary at 8 a.m. on a Tuesday morning? I mean, yeah, sometimes I work from home and I can just go, yeah, you know, kind of set my own schedule. If I wanted to go to the dispensary at 8 a.m., I don't know, you'd have to be a damn good sale. See, most marijuana... F- Flower products cost around, why did they break it down this way? $40 for 2.83 grams or around a tenth of an ounce? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> who buys tenths? Tenth of an ounce? <laughs> hey man, I got this tenth. <laughs> $40 for a tenth. That's really high. If that's it, that's the yeah, Not that I trust this guy. Cause Ohio, you're not helping with this whole Michigan Ohio uh, rivalry thing. Yeah, like we're tenths. I gotta go to Columbus and pick up a tenth. No wonder when I bought that bag in Ohio that it was a little light. <laughs> you motherfuckers sell tenths. <laughs> Edibles appear less expensive with. Prices ranging from seventeen to a hundred dollars, depending on the size of the containers. Yeah, this is so unhelpful. Yo, dog, I got these tents. Jarris Barfield, sixty-six, waited in Bloom Medicinals Recreational Marijuana 
marijuana line early Tuesday morning. He was recently diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. Ugh. And he say he may only have six months to live. Can't make fun okay. of Jairus. His marijuana purchase, he said, was meant to bring him some happiness during the time he has left. Hey, you do you, Jairus. Yeah. Enjoy your 10th. And no reports of any, like, really long lines or anything. Just dozens of people showing up early. I mean, it's been long enough. Well, judging like, by the ages you've given, they're all retired. <laughs> didn't, didn't Ohio, like, soon after Michigan do the uh, medicinal? They've had medicinal for, like, a long time. I think. Not as long as as Michigan, but it's, like, definitely been longer than Michigan has even had uh, recreational. Ohio has had medicinal. That sounds right. So it's been a long period in between medicinal and uh, recreational licensing. And even a long period between the them making it legal. Hasn't it been like two years of them putting this together? Yeah. They have definitely taken their time rolling this shit out. Yeah, they voted it, what, in 2022? Yeah. They're like, yeah, we don't need money. It's cool, but it's not why we do this, man. It took two years to figure out the tenth system. Yeah, they, were, they had to convert. <laughs> they're on the they're on the uh, metric system over there. Yeah, you know, a tenth of an ounce. It's a standard measure. <laughs> like the whole reason behind the whole reason it ends up an eighth is because you're you just take any amount. You take a one of something, you know, and you mm. break it down half into half, quarter, quarter eighth. eighth, right? Like how do you, to get the tenths? You have to sixteenths if you want to be a dick about it, right? And then thirty seconds, sixty fourth. It just keeps going by half if you if you keep cutting each part that you yeah. cut off in half. So yeah, like tenths doesn't make any sense. It's not a good way to divide something up. You know, not even a pizza. Grams. You can't, how do you get ten pieces out of, out oh, of pizza? Uh, you, I guess you'd have five. I used to have right? to do yeah. that. Yeah, you do. Oh my god! <laughs> is, is there a technique? <laughs> yeah, no. I, yeah, I used to have to cut pizzas into ten slices. One, two. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Two diagonals on one side, one on the other. Yeah, and then one right down the middle. Well, no, yeah, you do, you do the cross, and then oh, okay. two on one side and one on the other. Oh, all right, all right. So th- was was this a request, like something a pizza that would normally be eight slices, they could request it to be cut to ten? No, Hot and Ready's used to be cut to ten, and then oh. they, they changed them to eight. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Seems like they were always eight slices to me, but yeah. I trust you. You're the pizza expert. Was. Was the pizza expert. Pizza Pizza for is now from eating. And I'll have recreational pizza. Mm, That sounds good. Get some recreational pizza. Is that legal? I voted in recreational (laughs) pizza in 2020. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's go get some recreational pizza and get out of here. Yes. Uh, at the Weedsman 420s, where you find us on social media, ChristopherMedia.net is where you can find all of the shows, all 10 years of them. They are there at ChristopherMedia.net, and wherever you listen to the show, if you can rate us, review us, we'd appreciate it. Maybe you can give us a tenth of a star. I don't know. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> but if you could do that, we'd appreciate it. It helps people to find the show. Please, thank you. And also, stay high. Stay high. Fucking...